It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the Sunshine State. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Miami Dolphins, and it's coming up next. It is a tropical, hot summer afternoon, so staying hydrated is going to be key for the players, the fans, even the commentators as we are at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I can give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football gives their defensive break and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Two teams on opposite ends of the Sunshine State. The Jags and Dolphins are underway. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Dolphins head out, led by the NFL's leading passer in 2023. Now in his fifth season, Tua Tungabailoa. And he's coming off a great season where he put up career highs in yards and touchdowns. While also leading one of the most prolific scoring offenses in the NFL. The number one thing he did last season, though, staying healthy. When he's on the field, Miami can roll. Off of play action, Tonga Bailoa. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Now Tua on the bootleg here. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Second and short, that's a rundown. So it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. First carry for Raheem Mostert. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. Here's a second down and seven from the 37. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. You still hold your breath a little when Tua gets out of the pocket, but there he made the wise call. If there's nothing downfield, just throw it away. They need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. In motion, Hill. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Throw out wide is incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. You still hold your breath a little as a defense when Tua gets out of the pocket. You're worried about him scrambling and getting a first down. But there, he made the wise call. If there's nothing downfield, just throw it away. Go, 
He's got the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, but there is a flag down. He might get another shot at this. Well, that flag puts them on their heels a little bit more defensively as the officials walk it upfield. Yeah, and they can blame the officials all they want, but bottom line, it's their own fault because, to me, that was an avoidable call. Stay focused and avoid major mistakes like that. Now, to be frank, a silly penalty there trying to block the field goal, and that leads to a fresh set of downs. Now Tua. Over the middle complete. It's Hill. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. The Charles here in their opening series, they said they had certain plays scripted for certain players. That looked like a well-designed play to get one of their top targets involved. Yeah, let's face it, Brandon. A player of his talent is a problem for any opponent to defend, and we saw it right there. They tried to deny an open lane to him. He still outplayed the coverage and scored the early touchdown. Good luck trying to figure out how to defend him as this game moves on. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and it's now a 7-0 game. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So here are the Jags now set to get their first drive. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. Last year was a bit of a mixed bag for Lawrence as he started off looking like a budding superstar. But then he suffered an ankle injury and was a shell of himself the rest of the way. His team needs him to stay healthy if they plan on maximizing their full potential. And if that ends up being the case, they'll have a good shot to win a lot of games here in 2024. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 27. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. The false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Now Lawrence. He'll get this into the hands of the wideout from LSU. Now the ball comes loose. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as... And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. Jalen Phillips, the former first-rounder, getting in there for the sack. And it's nice to see Phillips back on the field again after his year was cut short by an Achilles injury a season ago. Well, it's nice for us to see him. Quarterbacks, they may have a different opinion. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Looking to throw, Lawrence. 
Well, it's caught by Gabriel Davis. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. First down Jaguars after Gabe Davis makes another nice catch. And one thing about him, he's a big play waiting to happen and has been throughout his career. Finished the last three seasons ranking the top 10 for average yards per reception. And that's one of the reasons the Jaguars targeted him this offseason and brought him back to his home state. A quick throw there is incomplete. And now a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game. It has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Here's second and ten. They'll run for the first time with Travis Etienne. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 16. A very well executed play. It goes for 29 yards. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. ETN on the toss right. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Now Lawrence. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And now third down and six to go. A nice game there to his trusty tight end. And now it's got them thinking opening drive touchdown here as they get into the red zone. And in most cases with your tight end, you feel like you've got a mismatch no matter who's covering him. Is it a small cornerback? Is it a linebacker who may not run as well? In any event, whatever you see, you think that tight end can win that battle. Touchdown, Jaguars! Travis Etienne, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Well, we know he has decent hands out of the backfield. That's the first time, Charles, they've targeted him in the passing game, and it pays dividends. And I love the design, too, because they kept him in the backfield, made the defense think run first before they swung him out of there. And you're right, with his hands, they might want to throw it to him just a little bit more. Riley Patterson now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Travis Etienne on the touchdown reception, capping the drive. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So Miami coming out for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now. But this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth. If you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. 
And that's off the mark, incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Now a second and ten. In motion, the tight end. They'll run. Here's Devon Achan. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here is third down and four. Two are going to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Two of his Alabama teammate Waddle. First down, Miami. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Short throw to Smith. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Second down and three. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. They complete it to Hill. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Two and a tie week for the Miami first. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now a second and six. Play action, now it's Tua. This will be caught, it's Waddle. And he's gonna get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A gain there of 21 yards. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it, we can always lock in on the skill position, guys. But those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. And it's incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. In motion, Hill. On play action, here's Tua. They'll swing this out wide. Here's HN. This will be a five yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Now, well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. They'll come up facing third and five. In motion goes the tight end. Tua sets up to pass it. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. 
They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins have taken the lead. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That an open man that time, they end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. On the draw, here's Lawrence. And he is going to lose yardage here. Defensively, they rally the troops to force fourth down after that seven-yard pickup back on first. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. Hey, yikes, terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. Miami set to take over. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Now they'll send Waddle in motion left. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Looking to pass to him. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And now we've got a third down and three. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. Ten seven, our score after one, right here on EA Sports.
Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Here's Tug of Iloa to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They go play action with Lawrence. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 22. And, partner, they're locked in man coverage out left, and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. On first and ten, it's ETN. He doesn't find a ton of space following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. Up from the secondary to make the tackle, Jalen Ramsey. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They go play action now. Lawrence. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. They sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. So the kick from here on a field goal would have been right at 53 yards. But instead, offense out there. They're going for it. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. Uh, he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, I've, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here. Fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Throwing now is Chunga by Lower. And that's incomplete. Well, partner, the hit sure looks like a simple route, but I think the issue with it is a lot of time when you're making that play, you're actually working your way back inside towards traffic where the big guys are coming from inside out, whether it's defensive ends or linebackers. And a lot of the time, Instead of securing the pass, your eyes might stray towards the middle and wonder where the big hit's going to come from. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Third and eight. Here's Tua.
Good work on the scamper by Tonga Vailoa. It's a first down. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. Going to the air, Tug of Iloa. It's caught, Smith. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Now HN on first and 10. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 12 more yards there and another first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. In motion, Hill. They'll swing this complete out to Hill. Touchdown! Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And they're able to add on to their advantage. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where did you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Sanders on for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And a drive that stalled out last time. Went for it on fourth, didn't get it. How does that translate here? I would imagine momentum's with the defense definitely with the defense because anytime anyone goes for it on fourth down that's telling you as a defense that they, you can't stop us. We don't think that you can. And when you actually do that may put a little dent in the confidence of the offense the next time they hit the field. Yeah, we'll see if they can bring that pride the offense this go around. They'll start on the ground. ETN up past the 30. Second down coming up. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? They'll send the tight end in motion. Here's Lawrence. Open man downfield is Davis. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands, a great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. 
They'll try the left side with ETN. A strong running. <laughs> And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They get Cam Robinson to tackle there. Here's Lawrence to throw. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Calais Campbell finding his way home for the sack. And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Now that after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Oh, nice defensive effort there, providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver. Separates him from the catch, and normally he's a sure-handed target. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and forever. Lawrence will throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Well, that's a down and distance coach is always talking about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long. And you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him, sometimes even with extra pressure. And he, he knew that. I mean, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. Miami's offense set and ready to go. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run, pass, mix, and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. From the 31, here's second and three. Off of play action, tongue of Iloa. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Well, every lineman knows the rule. You only get a one-yard buffer beyond that line of scrimmage, and then the flag is thrown, and he got tagged for it there. Now Tua. He's got Smith here. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. It's so important to tackle well against these guys. But you and I both know that's easier said than done. When the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy. And it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down. And it did right there. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. In motion, the tight end. Two are going to throw. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. On second and very short, Tua. Blitz coming and down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, they have the right down and the definite distance to take a shot downfield. 
but it didn't work out the way that they had envisioned. No, that's a situation where if, if you take a sack close to the line of scrimmage, it's not that bad, but a loss like that, you can't, you can't take a sack there. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing you cannot do, they did. They'll see about converting this third and eight. They'll set up a throw. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. It goes as a gain of nine and it moves the chains. Ah, oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here, give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Back to throw here. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tap. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? A terrible spot for a holding call as they'll try again, but now from further back on first and goal. They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. On second and goal, Tua, throw caught by Achan. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. So fourth down, two of departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. The kick by Sanders is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal? <laughs> And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. Screenplay. Here's ETN. 
A nice little screen. They get six on first down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, backdoor them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Now Lawrence. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Lawrence. And one more time, here's Kirk. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now second and three. Again, it's Lawrence. Finds his tight end, Ingram. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. the play fake. Here's Lawrence. Open man complete downfield to Davis. Touchdown Jaguars! Gabriel Davis, 38 yards. And the Jaguars get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Extra point try now for Patterson. And it's good. The deficit six, 20 to 14. So that drive spanned five plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Gabriel Davis. To the touchdown. Cook now to kick this one away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Dolphins taking over now late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there. That could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Tua sets up to pass it. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's Tug of Ilo to throw. Short throw to Smith. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard.
Looking to pass. Tua. He'll swing this out wide. Here's Ancient. And this time not quite to the 30. He'll be down at the 31-yard line. That one a first down pickup of eight. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Sanders' kick is good, and that will make this a nine-point lead. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. So time it up for a kickoff here. Five seconds remaining in this first half. Washington now brings this out. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So the two teams will head to the locker rooms here in Miami with the Dolphins on top. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. two first half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. And they have had their problems moving the ball through the air as we take you through some of the action from earlier. This secondary has played about as well as you can. Many times they've left this quarterback with nowhere to go with the football. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw to Ingram, and he'll be just shy of the 20 at the 19 as he goes out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Now Lawrence. And Thomas has it. So nothing doing there. 
And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. As a defense, you want bounce when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Lawrence. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a gain of a couple there. And that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins offense and Tua Tunga Vailoa headed back out onto the field. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would. And in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches where they've talked about, hey, we just... That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, 63 yards. And the Dolphins are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Partner, they had a good lead as they went into the half, and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it. I love their consistency. Don't worry about what they said at halftime. This seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes, and while this game is far from over, I love their approach. Mike McDaniel, no hesitation on his end. He's telling his offense to go for two. Now they send a man in motion right. The two are going to try and throw for it. That's caught. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation this time unsuccessfully i just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go when it moved up from the three to the two you would think maybe a few more attempts at running i, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Here's Lawrence to throw. To the right side and complete to Thomas. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Well, they obviously red man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, 
Probably thought he's going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. He's got his big tight end, Farrell, complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Lawrence will throw. A short throw to Ingram. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Looking to throw Lawrence. And Davis has it over the middle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. He had to fight that time, ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Throw left side complete. That's Davis. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. From the gun on third down, Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown, Jaguars. Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Trying to make a comeback often appears daunting, but the only way to get there, start small. Score and worry about getting the next one after that. Patterson now for the extra point. And this one's back to an eight-point game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. To the touchdown cook now to kick this one away and they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27 The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. 
pure unbridled joy after that one. Two yards to go, second down. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. And a penalty accepted, and they move the ball forward. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and ten. Now a give to Mostert, running right. And the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Now Tua. He'll dump this off to A-Chan. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Third and four. Two are going to throw. It's Hill, complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down, although it doesn't appear to be by much. He needed four, and he got four on third down. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. And this one complete to Smith. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Two and a throw again. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And Waddle going to have a Dolphins first down as he'll be brought down just outside the red zone. Mark him at the 21. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And they'll accept that penalty. Now a chance to make that encroachment penalty really hurt. First and five. Up the middle, a chance. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Here's Tua. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Mostert is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. 
He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. Only a yard on the gain there as time will run out on this third quarter of play. So with a fourth and goal looming, we hit the end of three quarters of play. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's Dolphin football. It's also Dolphin lead to begin quarter number four. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to make it a two-score game. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely... That was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10, right at the 30. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Thomas has got it, complete. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. They work now on second and nine. Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. In motion left is Thomas. He gets it to Thomas. And he will have a Jaguars first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. He'll get this up to about the 44. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Here's second and seven. Play action. It's Lawrence. And incomplete on the deep ball. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. And this offense on third down today, they're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. 
And here's a spot where this offense says, we got to start making something happen. We're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter. We've got to start moving with some urgency. And here's a big play that gives them a ray of hope that they can get back in this one. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Now Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. In motion right is Davis. Again, it's Lawrence. Throw right side caught by Davis. And the Jags are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll run with ETN. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. From the two now, second and goal. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. Lawrence now off the bootleg. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Calais Campbell picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Remember, throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. And they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Here's Lawrence to throw. Screen play, here's ETN. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Riley Patterson now on for the field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Patterson's kick is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. The field goal we just saw has this now at a one-score game, and on this side of the football, things are getting pretty tenuous, a little stressful. Blood pressure up a little bit, you think? I think up a lot of it. Uh, could you imagine taking the pulse right now? Might be like a jackhammer out there on that side of the ball, but here's what the deal is. I think what we've observed is a team that's been playing not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And they've got to get back to that, and that means opening things up again, being a little more free in what they're trying to get done on offense. 
Tua sets up to pass it. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. Well, he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. His big game continues. Already has the three touchdown grabs, tacking on some more yardage and a first down. And how precise has his route running been in this game? We just saw him get open yet again, and he's also made adjustments as the defense has tried to really stop him. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. Throwing now is Chunga Bailoa. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while well, he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. They'll run for it with a champ. And good work there in open space. He's got this all the way down now to the 32. 43 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, oh, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Looking to pass, Tua. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Now Tua. That is caught. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 16. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Here's a handoff to Mostert running left. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Second and 10. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Here's Mostert. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Second and goal from inside the five. Get 
Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Mostert. And he is going to lose yardage here. Such a long drive here. Three points. That would be a disappointment, but I don't know if you can go for it here, can you? Well, you know, the defense was really giving them a lot all the way downfield, and now they've stiffened. Forget that bend don't break. Now they don't even want to let them get a yard, do they? So in this spot, you remember what the coaches told us before the ball game? Any drive that ends with a kick is going to be okay with us, whether it's a punt, a field goal, or an extra point. Take the field goal right here. The kick by Sanders is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars. Down by 11, a little over a minute to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now Lawrence. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. I tell you what, when you're down on the scoreboard, you've got to look to your stars, and that's what they do here to start the drive. I wouldn't be surprised if they looked his way a few more times in short order. That one, well designed, and it's a quick first down. Lawrence will throw. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. That time, Bradley Chubb shooting in there for the sack. And it has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. This one incomplete and over everybody. Looked like a clear throwaway, but the officials, they're going to say there's a receiver over there in the area, so no flags, and it's third down. A final shot now for Lawrence. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League. But fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you have to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan. They all scout. They all think they're prepared. But executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely.